I've been using a pair of Genelex. These ones, 8020. It's a small four inch loudspeaker and they are great. I really, really love them. But, uh, and they, they do have a really good bass response. However, it's a physical limitation, of course. You cannot go lower than 60 something, I think is a cutoff frequency of these. But then recently, a couple of days ago, I found a secondhand subwoofer, the 7050, which belongs to these, to these speakers. And when you're adding a subwoofer, so if you, like me, I've been using a 2.1 system. Uh, oh wait, 2.0 system. Only the tops, the, the front speakers like this. And then, yeah, then um, I'm, the preferable way to, to listen would be, think of it as a, a triangle where all the sides are equal length. And then your, your head is here, the listener. And you're really happy because it's such a good sound from the Genelex. So when you add a su subwoofer here, what happens then? Well, you're gonna, we can look at the frequency response like this. You have the speakers up there, the small ones, and frequency is here. I see you have to move it a little bit. There, we can see it. <coughs> and uh, it has dB here. So the frequency response from the, from, from these guys is gonna be something like, something like this, I guess. This is st professional studio speakers, so they have a very flat frequency response. The point is that these ones should not color the sound, they should just present the sound as it is, so that you can, as an audio engineer, work with it and know what you're listening to. Now when you add a subwoofer to this system, <clears throat> the subwoofer will take care of the lower part of the frequency range. In this case, it's gonna be something, oh, it's too thick. Something like that. And there's a filter. There's a filter in the subwoofer, I think I've set it now to 85 hertz. And that means that you have a cutoff frequency at 85 hertz. <clears throat> and then here's here's the cool thing. that the, the small speakers and the big speaker on the floor, when you play them now together, each of them, the, the speakers on the top, they have a filter that that is a high pass filter. Everything higher than 85 comes through and you can hear it. And with a subwoofer, it's the other way around. It's a low pass filter. Everything lower than the 85 hertz cutoff frequency is what you hear. And then when you play them at the same time, you will get addition of two sound pressure levels. So that is the resulting sound pressure level will be, let's do it as a dashed line instead. And preferably not in black, I want it in red. There we go. Nice and flat frequency response in the full range. I think I can go all the way down to, to 25 now, 25 hertz. So it's uh, it's quite an upgrade. And I'm so happy that I found this used subwoofer for a good price. <clears throat> However, there is some other things that you need to know about when you're working with, with a subwoofer. Because if you just place it inside the room, you have to remember the phase, the phase difference. Here's a good one. It's a little tape measure and it's actually, it's graded in, in frequency on one side and you got the wavelength on the other side. So depending on where you place the speakers in relation to each other, let's say for simplicity, let's say it's one meter, one meter, one meter. And in the best of worlds, then you would place your subwoofer somewhere where the phase difference will be ideally zero, so that you have the same distance to the subwoofer as you have to the other speaker. So there's always one meter. And in my case, I put it on the floor right between my legs in the front of me. So the sub is placed down here, big fat sub. And I think I have if I eyeball it, it's pretty much one meter, one meter, one meter to all my speakers. So I think it's going to work out pretty nicely. But it's not always you can do th like that. You, you, when you furnish your room, you are quite limited in where you can place the subwoofer. So you need to know about this. Because if you place it in a corner or a, a bit to the, to the left over here, and then maybe you have 
let's say you've got all of a sudden two meters. So then you have a two meter difference in, in uh, uh, travel time because sound has a limited, a finite speed of 344, 343 meters per second. So if you have double the distance to the subwoofer as you have to the other speakers, then when you do this, when they're supposed to add up, well, they might add up in level, but they won't add up in phase. So let's say you have a kick drum, boom, on the drummer. Then you will hear the kick drum first from these two speakers, and it will come a bit later from the sub. And that's not good. That will be a problem. So you might have to do some phase correcting and stuff to, so, so, you get the, so you get the length correct. Now with modern systems, this has actually turned out to be a lot easier, because now you can sometimes get a real advanced kit where you just you place a microphone in your sweet spot. That is, where, where your head is supposed to be when you're listening. And you place a special mesh microphone there, <coughs> connected to a little box, connected to the speakers, and you push a button, and uh, abracadabra, uh, sim salvim, and son, all of a sudden, it sorts out all the, the phase differences and the, the co frequency corrections and everything, and that, that's uh, really, really wonderful technology. But uh, if, you, if you want to do it really, <laughs> really simple, you could... You could use, um, you could perhaps use a cable if you want to measure it. Because if you're an audio guy like me, you probably have a lot of cables. So if you attach one of the cable to each loud to the speaker, and you have, this, and then you can just hold the ends of it and see that you got the the same length all over the place. Or you can just use one of these. That's also possible, of course, and check it out. So, well, yeah, that's that's a bit of a loudspeaker theory. I'm I'm. Uh, I'm a building acoustician, so this is not my main topic, but I think it's a lot of fun with uh, with sound and music, and I just love to to have a good sound system so that I can go and sit down and really listen to music, because they're, they're, that's f focused listening when you can just sit down for if it's just five minutes, but if you can sit down, listen to the music, that is such a pleasurable experience that I think we all probably should do. A bit more often because I, I often tend to do other stuff when listening to mu music so it's not focused I'm not entirely present but uh, to, to sit there on a good system and be present and listen that that is really awesome so and in tonight's video I'm wearing my favorite green jacket this gray white shirt which uh, has some patterns on it and there's some gray in the pocket square and there's some burgundy as well which matches quite nice with all this so it's a pretty good solid combination with a brownish belt stitching has the same color as the pants as well so that's a little nice feature so see you later <laughs>